first speaker today, I will tell you about the, uh, a brief introduction of the case study subject matter. Uh, the case study is about uh, treatment solutions to the uh, diabetic uh, disease, uh, the di diabetic uh, di person, di diabetic diseases person. Uh, the patients. Uh, there are two types of uh, diabetic diseases, as you know, type 1 and type 2. Uh, type 1 is uh, more than detrimental because uh, the uh, patients no longer able to produce insulin within the body. And type 2 is a uh, early stage of the illness. It suffer from an enhanced insulin, insulin resistance if uh, it will not... Uh, 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 maybe if it is that treated, it can be a type 1, turn into type 1. Uh, and uh, as a solution of the pharmaceutical industry, uh, artificial pancreas uh, treatment is uh, produced. It uh, measures the blood level, uh, blood, blood uh, sugar level, and uh, automatically inject insulin to the body of the uh, human. Uh, but uh, now, uh, a digitalized solution is uh, 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 given by the uh, digitalized uh, pharmaceutical industry. Uh, it is called the uh, smart tooth system. It is a digitalized treatment. Uh, it gives uh, the, when the patient uh, eats something, it detects the, uh, the uh, glucose level of the food intake and also detects the uh, chewing and uh, swallowing of the food. And uh, then it uh, uh, analyzed that uh, the uh, data, uh, that uh, data to uh, analyze and uh, uh, the by machine learning algorithms, uh, pa the per patients' personal eating patterns uh, are uh, are detected, and then this data is transmitted to the an application to your mobile phones or another reception device and uh, the, this uh, application visualizes the generated data and uh, then uh, my uh, colleagues will continue. So behind this uh, smart tooth we have the, the following uh, business model. So regarding the, the resource uh, perspective, um, we have one uh, very important aspect is relating to the value creation uh, partners. So the first one are the, are the artificial uh, pancreas manufacturers because there are a, a very um, a strong link between the, uh, this smart tooth and the, the artificial uh, pancreas. Uh, we have also the diabetologist and, uh, and the dentist uh, because here we are talking about a medical uh, device. Um, we have um, to finish the insurance also companies. It's, it's, uh, it's key for this uh, business model uh, because we need to have their consent for the reimbursement of the, of the device. And it will, be, uh, it will have a, a main impact regarding the sales. Um, regarding the, um, the key resources uh, required uh, for, this, uh, for this product, uh, so we have the knowledge of uh, on, 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 di on diabetes and um, the relevance between the, the diabetes and the, the patient diets. We have also uh, clinical experiment um, resources and, um, and uh, experience uh, because a lot of uh, such things have to be done to validate the, the, the product. Um, we have also uh, existing uh, distribution uh, ch channels. Regarding the, the last part for, um, for the core competencies required, um, to be able to offer this, uh, di this, uh, this tooth. Um, there is a, a key aspect is the knowledge and expertise of all the, the employees uh, to be able uh, to do the research uh, in, di in diabetes, to be able to educate the, the doctors and the, and, the, and the dentists and also the sales staff, and also to be able to, um, to reach for uh, the, all the, the medical approval needed to put in place this, uh, this device. Uh, uh, next is uh, market perspective. Uh, here we need to understand what is the differentiation, what is our uh, unique selling proposition. And we need to understand what is our market position. Uh, so to speak, uh, what do we sell to whom? 
And this is our unique se selling, pro selling proposition. Uh, for example, improved calculation for the insulin injection and uh, released patient from the thinking of the diabetes. And uh, user-friendly smartphone app, something like that. And by the this uh, unique selling proposition, uh, smart tools enable the patient to the improve uh, the quality of their life. And next is a market, uh, market position. <coughs> Our target group is not only a patient, but also uh, AP supplier and dentist. The reason why, uh, smart tooth is not a standalone system. Sm smart tooth is a supply uh, device for the AP. Uh, <coughs> and in addition, of course, uh, smart tooth is a medical product so, uh, therefore, uh, our target group includes not only a patient, but only an AP supplier and dentist. And regarding the customer relationships, uh, there are two points. First point is uh, exchange with the uh, physicians. <coughs> uh, smart tooth is a highly specialized uh, medical product. Uh, and we need to raise uh, physicians' awareness of the smart tooth. Because so, uh, exchange with the physician is uh, very important. The second point is uh, social media interaction with the patients. Of course, patient is uh, very important for us. <coughs> so we, we need, um, uh, we would like to make the uh, <coughs> patients to aware of the smart tooth by the social media. And, uh, regarding the sales channels, there are two channels. Uh, first channel is, uh, uh, smart tooth hardware to the customer, to the patient, via the physicians. Because uh, normally, uh, patients cannot buy the sm uh, such kind of the medical device directly from the supplier. So we need to the sell the smart tooth via the physician. Second channel is a uh, uh, smartphone application. It uh, will be available from the, uh, for the download from mm. Uh, App Store, the Google Play Music, of Google Play. It is a uh, sales channel, second sales channels. This is our market perspective. So, from the next, from the next, we are going to explain the comparison of the traditional pharmaceutical company and digital co pharmaceutical company. So you have already noticed that our customer is a very special person. It's not just a customer who can buy whatever he likes anywhere. No, it's a, it's a patient. The customer is a patient, so what we are dealing with is the pharma business. And therefore it makes a lot of sense to compare the traditional pharma business with what we are looking at in the context of um, the smart tools. So in traditional pharma, if you look at the research and development of pharma, how it works, it's you have specific substances and compounds, biologics, that you use for the treatment of diseases. It's quite easy, you usually put it in a pill, give the pill to the patient, that's how it works. And uh, the development of, of the compound or the biologic is usually, it's an established way of how to do that. Empirical technologies, it's actually quite, so to say, well established. Um, if you look at the competitor structure, it's also in the pharma business, everybody knows everybody, so the competitors are quite well known. You have your generic competitors, you have your originator competitors, and it's a quite known environment. Okay, so it's 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 quite homogeneous. Um, looking at the at the product, as I said before, it's like a pill or something to inject. It's one thing that you have, and usually, uh, from a patent perspective, you have a, a, a patent portfolio that's really centric to the product. So you have usually one very strong piece uh, of IP and then you have uh, small others, other patents around it, but it's not a huge portfolio and it's not very diverse. If you look at, if you now want to, want to put our treatment, which is the insulin, in a digital environment with the smart tools, we have to think of a lot of other things in the R&D um, environment. So there's um, sensors that are involved, you have algorithms behind it, there's simulation going on, you have the data that needs to be transmitted and the interface to um, collect the data, read the data and use it afterwards in the artificial pancreas. Um, it's, it's individualized data as well and so all those systems um, have to work together. It's really complex technology so it's completely different from the traditional classical pharma 
environment. Um, looking at the competitive environment as well, there you have to deal with a lot of other, uh, a lot of diverse competitors, so to say. You have competitors, of course, that work in the pharma field, looking at your, uh, at the insulin, for example. But then you also have the software piece, you have the algorithm piece, you have the manufacturer for the little sensors, and there's just a lot. It's, it's a complete complex environment that you have to take into account. Um, at the end of the day, looking at the smart tools alone, you also have one product, but you, you need to make sure that it's really protected by uh, different patents. So you will create a multitude of patents to make sure that you can uh, appropriately safeguard your customer benefit. Okay, we ask ourselves what are the implica uh, implications from the traditional and from the digital pharma for the IP strategy. We know that the traditional pharma, pharma is a fortress mon monopoly and this is why because we have a product, we have a substance we, which we could directly uh, protect. We, uh, we, uh, we know that the framework conditions are that we have a product that we could protect and we uh, might be able to extend even the uh, term of protection with uh, uh, protection certificates. What normally leads to the implications that we have a clear structured portfolio for the substances we have and we create market barriers for competitors to enter the market because we are able to, we have been able to uh, protect the uh, substances which are used for the uh, healing of a patient of a disease. And but we know as well, we can as well uh, make a good market survey for competitors. So we immediately know if somebody would infringe if he enters the market with a similar uh, product. <coughs> the Fortress Monopoly is no longer working for uh, the digital pharma and this is why as uh, Christiane pointed out because we have a range of products and we are no longer it's no longer possible to create the patent for a substance for a product. In contradiction we have here a, med a value added monopoly um, because we have a range of, we try to offer a range of products for a range of services, goods and services. <coughs> this is so impossible to cover the entire, our entire offer to the client with one product, but uh, we have to see what is the customer benefit and what, how we can protect it. So we try to protect the features which are re relevant for the user and which are then can generate a premium price for us. And we try only to create uh, protection where it is possible and then uh, to uh, only limited way in this uh, <coughs> product we try to abstract or to uh, uh, abstract competitors. And this is the uh, added value monopoly. And from this, we try to now uh, come to the organizational structure which implies these two uh, monopolies. Yeah, so thanks to Andreas for introducing uh, our um, generic IP strategies, uh, traditional pharma versus digital pharma, the fortress monopoly versus uh, value added monopoly. But. Uh, um, yeah, IP strategies are nice, but without the organization, you can do nothing. So, uh, it would be nice to let's analyze uh, together uh, some of the uh, benefits of these different organizations, uh, different organizational structures that would help us uh, support our, our, our business model. Um, so, first, uh, Fortress Monopoly, traditional pharma, uh, we're talking uh, empirical technologies. So we really, this is an expensive process, we really need to protect uh, the uh, returns of, on our innovation. R&D was very expensive, this is absolutely key. So of course uh, we are going to have very close alignment with uh, R&D and uh, try to patent as much as possible um, to protect even iterative uh, in innovations, but uh, also 
new developments uh, re related to our our uh, our core um, our core technology. In addition, it's key to uh, avoid infringement uh, in this area. So we want to, of course, patent extensively. Uh, should we be uh, uh, accused of infringement, we can use this, of course, in a in a uh, in a way against our our um, accusers. And again, market entry barrier is uh, would be very useful uh, to benefit to implement via this uh, organizational structure. Um, contrast this with uh, the value added monopoly. So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, our fortress monopoly we focused on empirical empirical technology. Digital uh, pharma value added monopoly we're talking about uh, complex technologies. So. We may be a specialist in one or two or three uh, different kind of technologies, but uh, it would be useful to, yeah, perhaps engage in open innovation with uh, with potential collaborators. Um, we're at the beginning of the S curve, I assume, with this technology, so uh, we should probably um, construct our IP uh, organization as such. So we have, of course, a close alignment of our IP. Uh, with uh, product management and marketing to really understand what our customer wants. And of course, this, this is dynamic. It's not like a, a, a need, it's a want. The wants change, the preferences change. And our sales and marketing teams are probably the, the best uh, um, individuals in the company to really convey this to the IP uh, department. We, uh, of course, uh, construct our IP around this, around this idea. Uh, as I mentioned, open innovation, we might be able to reduce our R&D costs. Uh, this is clear. Um, and of course, we reduce our costs because of the uh, more focused uh, aspect of our, of our IP uh, generating activities. Uh, what we learned is uh, from this strategic setup that um, uh, traditional farmer is uh, automatically and traditionally leading to an organizational setup that uh, is a protection center. Uh, so uh, this is the typical uh, um, structure for for uh, traditional for the traditional way, consisting of um, of uh, the three pillars: uh, IP strategy development, patent application, and decision making, and competition monitoring. Oh, there's something wrong, Alex. Uh, you know, uh, you remember errors and slides have an eternal life. Okay. So, okay. Um, if we go into this traditional field, uh, we we might uh, uh, very well find what we all know from our daily praxis, namely, uh, in case an IP uh, disclosure is coming up uh, in doubt, it is uh, it is uh, patented. Uh, there is no negotiations with no party in the house uh, f uh, that challenges these decisions. So, uh, what is the result then at the end? Uh, it, there is a huge, uh, a big portfolio uh, covering nearly everything that is coming up, whether valuable or not, with a focus on uh, risk reduction, minimizing risks. And this is maybe uh, something what you will find in your respective uh, companies, at least I do find it uh, in my company uh, extensively uh, in all the divisions. And this might be is a, is a risk minimizing approach, but it's a very costly approach and in terms of efficiency and effectiveness, not uh, the, the gold solution. So, and what we see here, uh, this is significant. There's a lot of functions missing uh, that have to do with IP or should have to do with IP to make it valuable, to add value, to add customer benefit. That uh, appears a little bit later when we come to the uh, differentiation center. It's a different approach, a more efficient approach, and uh, is introducing all these functions to give whatever is elaborated in IP more value and substance. So, uh, when we look at the org structure, uh, the org structure has to fit with the strategy. Uh, uh, for a no strategic objective can be reached with the wrong organization. For the traditional farmer, this 
sort of setup might be doing a job, although expensive and uh, slightly inefficient. But if we slip and if we uh, go to digital pharma, we need something totally different in order to cope with the uh, changed environment and uh, mechanisms and uh, also uh, with the demands that are uh, on this system. Uh, so, um, again, uh, digital pharma uh, is uh, um, a different process because not only involving uh, more stakeholders that are significant and add value to the process and the product, which is IP for the business, but also uh, having a different uh, focus. You, you, uh, you, if, you, if you compare uh, the, the setup uh, we, uh, between traditional and digital, the first thing that uh, comes into, uh, uh, into sight is that it is dedicated to single business models and innovation projects. Here, is the big umbrella. We are responsible for everyone, no specifics because we don't even know, we don't have the right stakeholders on board, so let's just cover everything and spend all the money we have. Typical for many companies. Here is much more focused and is based on a business model analysis and there is targets below. So uh, the activities that are taking place are per se much more efficient because all these prerequisites that are missing in a traditional model. Uh, second, patent application decisions. The main difference between those two setups is in the latter uh, case, we have an additional stakeholder on board, a very important uh, one. This is the IP committee. The stakeholders of diverse disciplines that together jointly as a team are making the right decision or are fortifying the, the uh, uh, rationals to do a decision. Um, and it, uh, it's, uh, it's made sure that uh, there's a fit with the IP strategy. Uh, fit with IP strategy means there has to be one. And this is also a, um, a very, very important prerequisite. Here, uh, when you say, uh, in case an, I, an IDD is popping up, protect, you don't need an IP strategy. But here, when you get more focused, you need one, essentially. And you want to create exclusivity for customer benefits, which are named, they are listed. You can focus on them. And uh, last but not least, uh, the difference here is uh, uh, between the two, uh, the two uh, claims. Here you have an observation of the market and competitive environment in general for similar products in your segment. And for the digital pharma, you go for similar customer benefit claims. That means the focus is going away from having a look at compa uh, a comparable industry, but then having a, a look at the customer too, which is uh, may maybe not so super usual yeah, in the industry. When industries are playing amongst uh, each other, they look at each other, compare and so forth, but the customer is, uh, is out there. And he is now taken into consideration, which is significant. It's a significant change. <clears throat> okay. What more to say? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, obviously, that's not trivial. It's a, it's a complicated change of organization. It's a total change of organization. Stakeholders needed here might appear in the second setup with the digital pharma, it's industry zero, you remember, uh, but not necessarily. They might disappear, other stakeholders on place. So uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the summary given in one sentence uh, for organizational structures, difference between the traditional way to do it, as we did it so far, and going for digital pharma, which is already on the way to come up, is simply changing everything. Thank you.